hot. Sit down for a minute. Look, I know what you're going to say. I went to the video disco last night to see if I could find Preacher. He wasn't there, so I went to his home. He wasn't there, so I waited around for a little while, and then I came back Well, here. I can't honestly say I'm unhappy he was out. Well, Miles, I think that you should be, because Preacher is somebody I care about, and he's somebody that I want in my life. Why? Look, I don't have to explain that. They're my own feelings, my own personal and private feelings. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to... wait a second. I'm just going to go upstairs to my room. Mrs. Goodman is cleaning your room. Well, so much for my exit line. Look. Dear Johnny, I know this will be a big surprise to you after all these years, but I'm in Monticello and would like to see you. Actually, I need to see you, John. I got a little trouble and I sure could use your help. Your loving daddy, Del Emerson. You've certainly gone through a lot to get the phone book, haven't you, Mr. Cameron? Just keep playing, Devereaux. Was it really necessary to kill Patricia? It was necessary to kill all of them, including Whitney's maid, Nora Fulton, who overheard my phone conversation and found out that I was a double agent. You see, Mr. Devereaux, in my business, the stakes are very high. The fate of millions hangs in the balance. We have to be prepared to take a life, just as we have to be prepared to give one up. I had to kill all of them. There was no other way. Why have you stopped? Only one move remains. Well then, make it, man. And what happens then? I haven't seen anybody deliver the one million dollars for the list. You know, Mr. Devereaux, I can easily make the last move myself. No doubt. That makes you rather expendable, doesn't it? But what about our deal? You thought we had a deal, Devereaux. We didn't. Oh, dear. And to think of what I could have done with a million dollars. Make the last move. Now, that would be suicide. You understand my reluctance? Why don't I allow you the privilege? Well then, we'll have to be saying goodbye, Devereaux. I'm truly sorry it had to end this way. Don't you want to be sure that the last move produces the program? And the phone book? All right. Over there. Come on. Slowly. Just be sure you don't make one false move, Deborah. That's a good fellow. Now, for the end of a quest. Queen to Bishop Three.
I gave you one final chance to show some common decency. And you turned me down. Checkmate, Mr. Cameron. I'd like to place an international call, please. Yes, to the United States. Set the table in here, we'll have fire in the fireplace, candlelight music. Maybe just like a real date. A date? I'm standing right here. I can't be a date. Don't move. Gunther, we're engaged to be married. Uh, yes, sir, I understand. Uh, do you want something, Gunther? Uh, yeah, well, I kind of hate to bring it up right now. Uh, force yourself. Uh, yes, sir. Well, Mr. Whitney, it's like this. See, now, uh, Spencer used to write out my paychecks, but uh, seeing as he's at the bottom of the river... Uh, oh, uh, payday, huh? Yeah, well, I guess I can manage that. I saw a check for ground or something. Uh, Excuse me. Good. Yes, sir, I... Uh, well, I, I, I really do appreciate this, Mr. Whitney. Gather, it's my pleasure. Mm. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll notice, I am giving you a 20% bonus. Bonus? In honor of our happy occasion. Why, uh, that's just great, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what happy occasion is that? Our marriage. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, Mrs. Devereaux. I mean, uh, Miss Alexander. There's been so many of them lately, I, I lost track. <laughs> uh, is, is something wrong, Gunther? Well, uh, Miss Whitney is like this. See, now, poor old Spence. Uh... Yeah, at the bottom of the river, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, that's right. Uh, you see, actually, now, uh, before he took his last dive, so to speak, uh, actually gave me a raise. A raise? Uh, yes, sir. 
Well, I mean, he had control of all your financial transactions, and he was seeing how hard I was working, how dedicated I was to the job, and... Uh... Well, um, do you have any proof of this, Gunther? A letter or anything? Uh, no, sir. I mean, uh, see, he sort of checked out kind of quick right after that, but I know you want to do the right thing. All right, how much was the raise? Uh, it's another $50 a month, and boy, I can sure use it. <laughs> $50, huh? Say, why didn't you mention anything about this when you were asking me for the raise the other day? Oh, Miss Whitney, I thought you knew. Fifty dollars, there you are. Yes, sir. Miss Whitney is very, very generous of you, sir. It comes from the heart, Gunther. Yes, sir. Heartfelt appreciation. <laughs> Nicole, I cannot tell you how happy I am to know that your ordeal is over. It was a dreadful mistake from the beginning. And I think it was monstrous that you were put through it for so long. Well, I am glad it's over. Of course you are. Well, let's all sit down. And I'm sure that you're anxious to start leading a normal life again. She certainly is. What do you have in mind? <laughs> I'll come right to the point. I would like to have you back at your old post as anchor for WMON News with as little delay as possible. All right. <laughs> Geraldine, now, that's hold wonderful. on, everybody. Hold on. Now, Geraldine, I won't pretend that those weren't the exact words I was hoping you were going to say, but what about Peter Nevins? He is a terrific anchorman. I agree, but I am the owner of the station. I gave Peter his job in the first place, and if I chose, I could take it away from him. Oh, that wouldn't be fair. Besides, WMON's ratings have never been higher. That's true. I'd be a fool to replace him. But it just so happens I am not a fool. It seems obvious to me that the ratings would be even more improved with you and him together as co-anchor. Now, you may feel that you don't want to share in the position that you held by yourself. I would understand, but I would be very disappointed. Well, come on, you wouldn't want to disappoint Geraldine, now, would you? I have a you? feeling she'd be very hurt. Come on, right, you two, please. That is enough. <laughs> same salary, of course. Listen to that. Half the work for the same amount of money. Well, hey, come on, what do you think? I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> My new tub. I love you too much to stay with you here. And with me not being the most important thing in your life. I think I've ever been happier in my entire life. We have been through a lot, haven't we? We certainly have. But it seems that there's still one thing missing. It seems perfect to me. There's something that I've been wanting to give back to you for a long time. <laughs> what is it? Open it. Goodbye with my money, buddy. He had taste. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, that must be a first. I don't. There's only one thing I want to hear you say. One word. Will you be my wife? We blew a fuse. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you, look, you look like a mad scientist in some old horror film. <laughs> yeah, the lights are out. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, we noticed. Maybe you should check fuses or something, huh? Oh, I did all righty. I mean, they're all okay. Oh, wow. Well, maybe we blew out the whole Midwestern power grid. <laughs> Uh, no, sir. Uh, the street lights are all still on. Oh, listen, uh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll check it out a little further. <laughs> well, wasn't such a great kiss after all, I guess, huh? 
Hmm. I think we should blow out every light in this block. I'm hoping you two are going to be partners for a long time. Yeah, you know, what's his name again? Uh, Egan, right? Uh, Chris Egan, right? That's right. So where is he? Right in the next room. <clears throat> Chief, what are you so happy about? <laughs> I'm just going to leave you two to get acquainted. <laughs> well, a bad dude like you, Pope Partner, we should be able to clean up this town in about a short weekend. <laughs> Detective Calvin Stoner, I believe. Chris Egan. Heard a lot about you. Yeah, well, evidently I didn't hear enough about you. Chris, this is for Christine. Right so. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry about what I said. I it's... took it as a compliment. Good, that's exactly how I meant it. Those are some really fancy moves you got there. Is that uh, your typical NYPD training? Oh, a little extra practice on my own. It bother you I'm a woman? No, it's just a little different is all. Everybody's told me how Damien Tyler was a hell of a cop. I have some pretty large shoes to fill. Yeah, they didn't fit Gabler very well at all, believe me. Yeah, I heard about him, too. Oh, that's just terrific. You just arrived. Everybody's giving you all the information. Me, they're keeping in the dark. Okay. Tyler isn't here. I am. Do I get a chance? Look, um, uh, Chief Mallory's told me all about your work in New York. And, frankly, with your record, I should be asking you for a chance. Uh, now that kind of attitude I can deal with. <laughs> I may not be a very good detective, but there is one thing I'm having a little trouble figuring out right now, and that is why would you give up a career like that with NYPD for Monticello? I needed a change. We have a case? Well, yeah, but there's no rush. Don't you want to unpack and settle in? No way. Sooner I'm in the water, sooner I learn to swim. All right. Well, we've been putting together this nice, thick little file on a local fence. His name is Jake Venefra. I think uh, we sew up one or two more loose ends. We can probably close them down. Ah, run something like this. You're sure he's receiving stolen property, but there's no proof he knows it's stolen. Ah, uh, I see you've done this before. Once or twice. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Uh, yeah, Venefra's always used middlemen, you know? No direct contact with any of the Bent Nose boys at all. As a matter of fact, he's been around a long time. I guess because most of his middlemen appear to be just as clean as he, but lately he's been uh, using this dude who's uh, got dirty fingers, you know what I mean? He's a real small timer named E.J. Pond. I don't know why Venefra would even use him in such a class operation, but maybe he's just getting a little sloppy in his old age. Hmm. Then let's retire him. I'm tired of evading all your questions about where I'm going all the time, so I'm going to try the straightforward approach and tell you. Well, that sounds good to me. Me too. Good. I have been trying to reach Preacher since last night. There's been no answer at his home, and he did not show up for work at the video disco. I tried again this morning, still no answer. I think that there might be something wrong, so I'm going to go over there. Judy, if there's something wrong, maybe you're better out of it. Well, maybe, but I, I feel that I want to go over and find out, so I'm, I'm going anyway, whether you like it or not. Jody, we can't keep you locked in your room. But we care very deeply for you. And it would kill us if, if you got hurt. But if you really want to go, we can't stop you. Up to you. Thank you. Yes, I really want to go. So don't worry about me, I'll be fine, okay? Have a good day. She's getting herself into trouble. We gotta try to help her. Oh, Miles, what can we do? I've gotta do something. I can't just sit here. Look, I know this is wrong. I know we should probably trust her. But if she says 
that there is something wrong with Preacher, then you know there's something really wrong. I'm going to follow. Miles! I know, I know. I may be making things worse, but to tell you the truth, now I'm scared for her. Before, I was just concerned. Now I'm scared. for high-quality television classics ends right here on USA. Stay tuned for the longest-running daytime drama on television. Search for tomorrow next.